So, this is new. What I have here are my five most recent soundbite videos, compiled together into one longer video. I'm guessing that you'd like to sit back, relax, and learn a few things about audio in a simple, easy to follow way. Not so much like actual audio masterclass courses, which are a lot more demanding, as you would expect a high level, thorough course to be. But you can check out Audio Masterclass through the link in the description. I'm going to start with my video on gated reverb, in which I create gated reverb on snare drum from scratch, and show you why getting a reliable trigger is important. Here we have a 1980s style drum track. I'm going to add gated reverb to the snare drum. First though, we'll hear ordinary reverb. I'll add a gate to the reverb. I've fine-tuned the settings already. It doesn't sound bad, but the gating isn't consistent on every hit. Listen again. That's because the gate is closing on the tail of the reverb, so it isn't always accurate. What I can do is trigger the gate directly from the snare. I'll activate the sidechain input. Then I'll set the key to be bus 1, the same bus that's feeding the reverb. It sounds like this. Much better. Let's hear before and after. Thank you for listening. You want to try that out right now, don't you? But wait, there's more. This next one is a bit more technical, converting left-right stereo to mid-side, otherwise known as MS, and back. It's an important element of a sound engineer's skill. In today's soundbite, I'm going to convert a stereo track to MS, then convert it back again. Here's my stereo track. Left, center, right. Left, center, right. I'll start by splitting my stereo track into two mono tracks. It sounds the same. Left, center, right. Left, center, right. I'll pan both tracks center and bounce to a mono file, which I'll call M. It sounds like this. Left, center, right. Left, center, right. And now I'll bounce. The S track will be the difference between the left and right channels. So I'll use a plugin to invert the phase of the right channel. It sounds like this, panned into mono. Left, right, left, right. You'll notice that anything in the center cancels completely. And bounce. I'll clear these tracks now. And import the M and S tracks back in. I won't play this because it doesn't make any audio sense. To convert back to left and right, I'll duplicate the S track. On one of the copies, I'll use my plugin again to invert the phase. Now, I can add M and S together, which will give me my left channel. Left, center, left, center, and bounce. And now I'll subtract S from M, which will give me my right channel. Center, right, center, right, and bounce. I'll clear those tracks and import my new left and new right channels. Because I named these files ending in L and R, Pro Tools will put them directly onto a stereo track. It sounds like this. Left, center, right. Left, center, right. And let's compare the original stereo track with the one I created. Left, center, right. Left, center, right. Left, center, right. Left, center, right. Thank you for listening. OK, maybe you don't want so much to try that out right now, but come back when you need to work in MS, as one day you undoubtedly will. My next sound bite seems impossible, but you can indeed go above 0 dBFS without clipping. Yes, you can easily do this while you're working inside your door, but surely it's impossible to break through 0 in a WAV file. Here's some music, time travelled all the way from the 1980s. As you'll notice, it peaks at 0 dBFS, which is what we used to do in the 1980s. We know better now, but this is good for my example. 
I'm going to raise the level by 12 dB. You will hear some distortion. But all is not lost because my digital audio workstation software, and yours, has incredible internal headroom. I can lower the master fader by 12 dB, or just a little more, and it sounds like this. Perfectly fine. But what if I bounced it to a WAV file? A 24-bit WAV file doesn't have any headroom above 0 dBFS. Let's try. Now that I've bounced and re-imported the file, we can audition it. Yes, it is distorted, and there's no way to fix that. The distortion is baked into the file. But let's do something different. I'll go back to the original, raise the level by 12 dB again, and bounce it, but this time to a 32-bit float file. It is still a WAV file, but in 32-bit float format. I've re-imported the file, and it sounds like this. We're still hearing that distortion, but I can do something magical. I'll lower the fader by 12 dB, and it sounds like... No distortion. This is because the 32-bit float format has similar massive headroom to your door, so no clipping. I wouldn't say that 32-bit float is the right format for finished work. The world isn't quite ready for that yet. But as an intermediary format, or sharing material with your collaborators, it's great. Clipping really can be a thing of the past. Thank you for listening. Please bear in mind my comment that 32-bit float is not suitable for final output. If people start doing that, the loudness war will surely go nuclear. Panning effects with filters. Yes, you can go way beyond what your regular pan controls can do. Listen to this. What I'm going to do today are some pan effects using filters that you can't do with normal pan controls. So here I have some music with the left and right channels split onto two tracks. Each track has a filter inserted, which in this case is from the Slate Digital Infinity EQ, although I could have used any EQ plugin that has filters. For my first example, I've used a high-pass filter that cuts low frequencies. In the left channel, the filter is set to 10 Hz, which is its lowest setting. And I've got a slope of 120 decibels per octave. I remember, in the olden days, the most we could get was 24 decibels per octave, but things are different now. So what I'm going to do is, in the left channel, start off at 10 Hz, which is pretty much fully wide open. You'll hear the full frequency bandwidth. I'm going to continue that until a quarter of the way through, then close the filter all the way up to 2 kHz at the three-quarter point, and then leave it for the rest of the track. Conversely, on the right channel, I'm going to start off at 2 kHz, then open up. So all we've got to do now is listen. So, a nice pan effect that you couldn't achieve using just the pan controls. This time, I have a low pass filter, and I'm going to be more extreme with this. So I've started off in the left channel at 30 kHz, so the filter is wide open. I've kept it fully open until a quarter of the way through the track. Then I've closed it down all the way to 10 Hz, which is as low as this filter goes. Conversely, on the right channel, I've started at 10 Hz, which is fully closed, and then I've opened the filter up all the way. Again, I've used a slope of 120 decibels per octave in both filters. So, let's listen to it. It's going to be a bit more extreme this time. So there we have it, panning effects with filters that you can't get with ordinary pan controls. 
Thank you for listening. And lastly for this compilation, an introduction to decibels. Maybe I should have put this first, but you know, this is my channel and I can put things where I like. I'd like to introduce you to decibels. If you've already been introduced, then maybe this isn't the video for you, but who knows, it might be interesting. What I'm interested in here is changes in level, and I'm going to illustrate changes from just 1 dB all the way to 20 dB, which, as you will hear, is a significant change. As source material, I'm going to use grey noise. Not white, not pink, not brown, or any fancy colour. Just grey. It sounds nice, and hey, you can look it up if you need to. I'm going to alternate between full level and 1 dB lower every two seconds. Here we go. One decibel is a very small difference, and most people wouldn't notice it without a direct comparison. But 3 dB, would you notice that? Three dB is about the difference that makes a difference. Anyone can hear it whether or not they have a direct comparison or whether they're listening out for it. Let's go large. Here's a 10 dB difference. Yes, this is a lot of difference. It's the kind of change you might make to an instrument or vocal when you're setting up your mix. But once you've really started to mix, it will be rare to make a change as big as this. But do it if you need to. Do it if you want to. We've gone large, now let's go mighty. 20 decibels. If I put this in terms of percentages, the level at 20 dB down is just 1% of the original. So there you have it, decibels. Have a play for yourself in your door and see what these differences mean to your music. Thank you for listening. That's all I have for now. I know a lot of YouTubers ask viewers to like, comment and subscribe. But honestly, please like or dislike this video and let me know your thoughts in the comments. This will help me understand your needs and help me make better videos. I'm David Meller, course director of Audio Masterclass. There's a link to Audio Masterclass courses in the description.